Up next, see how one Humboldt program keeps kids from falling off the edge. I'm Lisa McCree, and this is California Connected. California Connected is made possible by the James Irvine Foundation, expanding opportunity for the people of California. The William and Flora Hewlett Foundation, making grants to improve the quality of life at home and around the world. The California Endowment, working to improve the health of and health care for all of California's communities. And the Annenberg Foundation, advancing public well-being through improved communication. On this trip with California Connected, circling the wagons around our troubled youth, how one Humboldt program is blazing a trail. Well, my dad, he was okay with my drug use because he was an addict himself. You know, these are kids that most people will never see. Hi, I'm Lisa McCree, and welcome to California Connected. You're about to see what few adults ever see, the inside of a juvenile lockdown facility. Not the CYA, the California Youth Authority, which is under court order to change the way it treats the troubled youth incarcerated there. We received special permission from a number of departments and the courts to take you inside New Horizons with one important restriction. We protect the identity of the kids. We felt it was important to take you inside because this is the only program quite like it in the state. Take a look. This is where Humboldt County's juvenile justice system sends kids who've committed crimes again and again. Kids who failed at other programs and cycled in and out of juvenile hall. I was over there 16, 18, 20 times. I just got used to it. At age 14, this girl was addicted to heroin. I was using needles for 16 months straight. I was using needles in my arms, in my legs, back and forth. I just have a feeling I can't do good and that my life's just gonna, I'm gonna end up in prison when I'm older. And I don't know. New Horizons' goal is to find a way to give these kids the tools they need to change and get them back into the community. Seven o'clock every morning you get up, you gotta clean your room, mop your room, uh, wipe it down with your rag and make your bed and they do room inspections and they come by and they actually grade your room. For the 18 kids locked up here, County Correctional Officer Rebecca Bresca's face is one of the first they see each day. I try to greet them and be like, good morning, how you doing, kind of joke, you know, depending on the kids. Some of them are very moody, like most teenagers, and you just kind of like back away and open the door and, you know, jump two or three steps back and see what you're going to get. But, um, you know, most of the time I just try to, you know, wish them a good morning. Everybody wakes up and, you know, they want to... They want to feel normal, I guess, you know, and just do what they need to do. Rebecca brings a special perspective to her job as jailer. I myself was in um, juvenile hall and group homes when I was 12 and 13, and, you know, had, I was a teen mom, so I think I can really understand where these kids are coming from. What is it that saved you? Um, I think it was some really great people that um, were in my life when I was locked up or in living in group homes that really planted some great seeds into me and just, you know, had faith that I could get out of the system and didn't see me as damaged goods. These kids have robbed or assaulted people, stolen cars or sold drugs, and almost all have been diagnosed with substance abuse and mental health problems. I got so strung out there. I just took knives to my arm and... That's what this is. Went crazy, you know. Almost killed myself, you know. It hurts, doesn't it? For me, cutting myself, 
helped me to deal better with everything I was going through. The pain from cutting myself took the pain away that I was feeling. In most counties in California, if you want to find a kid that has mental illness, you can, you know, go to your, you know, your local juvenile hall. Dave Lehman was head of Humboldt County's probation department. Once the door is locked behind a kid, then the, the resources that are there that are intended to help people with mental illness are withdrawn. It almost feels intentional. <clears throat> well, you don't want to think that, but in order to protect the scarce resources, then you build these roadblocks into the systems. So the, ro the resources get tangled up and the kids get lost. Right. right. And, you know, you don't really see them when they're locked up. They're out of everybody's hair. So six years ago, probation formed a unique alliance with the mental health department and the schools to found New Horizons. It's literally next door to County Juvenile Hall, but a world away. I've always used to say that it's a tragedy to have to lock a kid up, put a kid in a cage. Um, and once you do that, it becomes even harder, you know, to get them back out in the community. So if you're able to interrupt that, then you're not only helping them, but you're, you're saving countless victims down the road. The program set out to do what the California Youth Authority has failed to do, provide kids with intensive treatment for substance abuse and mental health problems in a locked facility. Nurse Stacy Campbell is part of the mental health team. She says the toughest moment is when kids first arrive in the midst of a withdrawal. Biggest withdrawal is alcohol intoxication. Usually a probation officer or police officer will take them to the emergency room first and they'll handle them there and then bring them back. If it's a meth situation, a meth withdrawal, we have different meds depending on are they hallucinating, are they throwing up. 17-year-old Steve has been through meth withdrawal. Last year, he almost died of a drug overdose. It's been the first time I've gone a month without using any type of drugs since the first time I used when I was 12 or 13 years old. And it's really opened my eyes on, on the things that you can do when you're not high, when you're sober. After four years of getting in trouble with the law, from stealing cars to assault, he says he's learned some important lessons here. You really got to identify your triggers because they're everywhere you go. For example, an external, an external trigger can be somebody bumping into you and that makes you mad. But at the same time, your internal trigger could be saying to yourself, they, they did that on purpose. I'm going to have to get them now. So here is your journal topic. It is about what we're about. Like every journal topic here. So what are the unique talents of each animal? And how does each animal contribute to the success of the team? When they have this experience for the, you know, the first time in one, two, or three years of being sober for four to six months, um, you see these lights start, you know, switching on. And you say to them, yeah, aren't you glad you're sober today so you can understand that? Or, boy, it really helps when you sleep all night long, doesn't it? Saying something Teacher Mark Johnson came here fresh from Humboldt State and got more than he bargained for. I think for the last 15 years, what we've seen uh, locally for certain and probably across the state is, you know, the beginning of, of, of a set of kids that come with a lot more serious emotional needs and, and developmental needs that um, otherwise schools, probation and mental health aren't set up to deal with individually. And we have the sweet peas growing around underneath it so they'll cr climb up, it'll be cool, we'll have this whole will be like this wall of green. For the most of these kids, New Horizons is the first place they've had stability and nurturing in their lives. See how there's two of them? So what I'm going to try to do is divide these. I found that uh, working with a small group of kids, uh, having that ability to make relationships with them, uh, and not just teach them academics, but get to know them in a way, uh, because these are kids with special needs, to get to know them in a way where I can respond to that. Um, it really took all of me. It took my brain, it took my heart, and uh, that's the kind of person I am. Even when kids are allowed to socialize, there's an order based on good behavior. Go ahead. Do you know if we're gonna have group this morning? As far as I know, you guys are still having group. They get to wear different color shirts, and then also they will get passes depending on what uh, step they're on and what phase they're in. So it's a, it's a good way for them to uh, recognize their own behaviors and stuff, and they get they get told their scores at night. They come in here, um, step two, in green shirts. Then they go into gold, where they start getting passes with their parents. And then they go into purple, which is the last four weeks, and in, in hopes that 
uh, those those four weeks is a, is a time where they can show the new residents um, that are in green now what needs to be done in order to get through the program. School. You have your folder? You see if you get your folder? Most of the kids, um, when they came in at least, dealt with or, or came, perceived the world from the lower level moral, moral thinking, which is might makes right. So if I have the ability to take from you, or if I have the ability to forcefully impose my will on you to get what I want, that's what's right. Eddie Pena is a mental health clinician. So the challenge is to move them from that to the next phase where, you know, I'm going to treat others as I would like to be treated, and then to another phase, which the end result being, um, you know, I'm going to treat you okay because that's just what people do. Alonzo is walking along a side street with his friend Rodney. Rodney stops in front of a beautiful new sports car. Rodney looks inside and says excitedly, look, the keys are still in this thing. Let's see what it can do. Come on, let's go. The daily mental health classes here are back to the basics, learning the difference between right and wrong. So one of the reasons not to steal is consequences, but then I asked the question, what? Stinking pen, can I see that? <laughs> <laughs> purple one is only one What? Yeah, it's our purple pen. What about, about the other person? And why is that important? What about the Because think of how they would feel. Empathy. Okay. Both of you guys nailed it. Both of you guys nailed it. You, you, said empathy, you said empathy and you defined it. That's exactly why. We try to reward the extra step. And we try to reward, because kids need praise, especially these kids need praise. And so we try to give them verbal praise for operating at, at a higher level. Yeah? yeah? Nice job, you two. Then should Alonzo try to persuade, persuade Rodney not to steal the car? I put should persuade. Would you call the police? No. I would no. not want to call the cops. I mean, because calling cops brings, like, <laughs> drama. What's the agreement? Agreement. No, we not contact the police. Persuade. I say you should call the cops because I've been in this situation. Okay. There was three people in that car that got killed. All right. That was what you So it's personal for you. Can I leave? Yeah. She had a hard time because it was personal to her, and she asked to take a time out, and, and she left. And um, her therapist will check in on her. Probably already has. She's been dealing with a lot this week too, so maybe some encouraging words. Would Great. Be good. She's been managing her emotions really well. Did she get out on that pass to get her? Mm -hmm. Great. Great. It was a rough day, but she held it together. Good. She's like a little bit being. Um, you know, just playful, kind of like jabbing, you know mm -hmm, what I mean? Mm -hmm. Kind of rushing up. and Russell I've, type of... Yeah, I've kind of mentioned that, so maybe if you can address watch that. Boundaries. Watch your boundaries. Watch your boundaries with staff, you know. Excellent. Every staff member, including those from Corrections, works together in treating the kids in their care. Sometimes when the kids are interacting and there's tension going on or if they're having a bad day, I can, like, step back and, like, not just see the behavior, see the actions, but kind of look deeper than that and be able to understand. And that was a Mark wrote it? Mark wrote it up, but it said these actions present a threat to safety and security of the classroom. And that was with him and Kevin? Yeah. It says assaultive behavior or serious threats to the violence. Okay. So maybe, and maybe like give him a heads up on it that he really needs to get control of his actions. What we do is we work really hard at, really, really hard at being a team. Can I help you? And what I mean, incorporating ideas and integrating my, my background and, and my perspective with corrections and with probation and with school. It's as if each of you from your different disciplines are taking each other's hands and encircling the child. That's what we shoot for. We shoot for, you know, being child-centered, where we put the child in the middle and figure out what the needs are and then how we meet those needs from all our different perspectives. Okay. You know, there's been a lot of times where things that are very obvious to me as a teacher about how a kid learns uh, that I'm able to hand over to mental health clinicians so that they understand when they're doing a skills group that this kid is not going to understand just by going through it once and modeling it. During this period, we're going to continue to show the movie. they will give us cues and hints on how to work with that kid in a way that they're going to pick up what we're teaching in mental health, because if he's not picking up, what's the point? Me. 
uh, to show. Yeah. After five months at New Horizons, Steve is ready to graduate, and senior probation officer Brett Miranda meets with him and his father to come up with a plan for his new life on the outside. So today I thought what we would talk about since this is his last team meeting while he's in the facility is we'll go over his, his uh, his uh, case plan for him when he leaves the program. So, um, you want to go over your schedule that you you worked up as far as your daily schedule? We have planned. Well, like I said, I gotta add a lot to it. But uh, Tom said to put everything on it from the time I wake up in the morning. So the job thing is just down the road. That's that's like one of the goals from the family from the family plan. You right. Know, after right, he leaves, right, right, right. the goals of getting a job. Right. On his case plan, it's, it's where he's going to be living. Placement, obviously, he's going to be living with you, Mike, at home in Eureka. And we'll have to set up a time for our team meetings uh, when when you get out of the facility. We'll continue to do weekly team meetings. You think he has a chance? I do. Actually, I think he has a good chance. As long as, um, you know, as a team, we continue to work together uh, while he's in the aftercare portion of, of this program, you know, the stay the course, so to speak, and he has to continue to make the, the right decisions when he's out in the community. But other kids still have doubts about whether the program will work for them. Some of their tools are assets to life and some of them are crap. What's crap? Some of their things with their anger management, like they teach us to breathe and happy places. There's been a few times in here where I've gotten really angry and I don't think to myself, you know what, you need to breathe. You need to go to your little happy place, you know? But I know that in order for me to have a successful life and not end up in prison, then I need to stop thinking like that and change my thinking. This is your second time here? Yeah. So the program did not work for you last time? No. Don't you think people can change? Oh yeah, they can change. Like, my counselors are trying to get me away from my people, I mean, my peers. But uh, I still hang out with them, and if I get caught with them, then I get another violation, and then I get in more trouble, and then things escalate, and then I go on the run or something, and then I get in more trouble. And that's the biggest challenge Steve or any kid leaving a juvenile detention facility faces. Their old world and old friends are waiting for them. We are in the uh, Eureka um, public housing area of town. So this, this general vicinity is, is where a lot of the kids uh, live. Juvenile arrests for drug and alcohol offenses in Humboldt County are nearly double the state average. There's lots of uh, drugs and alcohol issues that uh, the parents have, uh, lack of parenting skills, um, lots of single parent homes. It's all back to the families. And I think when they were able to take an active part in the plan, uh, it, it, the, the child's more successful. Here, the families of the kids also have to go through therapy. Why is that important? There is addiction in my family background, and there has been a lot of issues that were really hard to talk about. And we've gotten a lot closer and had a lot stronger relationship because of it. All righty then. So. You guys know what day it is, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's YDB. Day, More than anybody, he's been our team captain of, of unity around here. You know what I mean? From the heart, man. I hear you saying things to other people like, no, nah, it's cool. Be patient. Out on the volleyball court. No, nah, relax, relax. It's about the unity. And thank you for that. Because I think everybody here is going to be looking at you and saying, what is going to be doing OK out there. Yeah. It's going to do all right. But I want to say I love all you guys to pieces. You guys are awesome. And really, I couldn't have graduated without you guys' help. Are you excited about your future? I'm very excited about the future. Two years ago, I was in a hole. And if you would have asked me that question, I would have said, what future? This program has really helped me to understand that if you push yourself and you, that there's nothing you really can't do, if you push yourself and you're motivated and you want to get, get stuff done, the numbers say graduates of New Horizons are half as likely to reoffend as similar kids coming out of other programs. Not a perfect record, but better than most. Thank you. I uh, met you next door, and every time I've been locked up, you've been there. And like, it's been fun. It's been fun with you too. And I want to kick it with you on the out, see how you are. Stay out of trouble. Positive choices. Oh yeah. All right. All right. You're my boy. All right. Five months ago, when I was sitting in number 16 right there in that cell, 
I didn't think there was any light at the end of the tunnel. I thought I was done for. I didn't care either. I was like, I'm done, it's over. But um, slowly I grew and matured. And check this out, a very, very wise man once told me, he said, there's always two paths in life. You can learn and you can grow every year or you can just survive. And I want you guys to all choose plan A from now on. I love you to pieces and I'm gonna miss you all. I'd like to present you with your certificate of, com of completion. It says this certificate of completion is proudly awarded for meeting the requirements of your residential phase of treatment, New Horizons. Given at the Northern Regional California Regional Facility, Eureka, this sixth day of May 2005. Your quote is nothing can stop the man with the right mental attitude from achieving his goal. Nothing on earth can help with man help with man with the wrong mental attitude. Congratulations. Thank you. Love you, Mom. We're building a pyramid. You know, we're doing something that's monumental in a sense that uh, we want to make it last to the point where there are no more boundaries between the disciplines because our people are not, you know, broken down into compartments as much as they're integrated. So I think this approach of, you know, trying to develop a system of care that really reflects, you know, a, a person holistically is um, much more important. As Steve goes out into his world to begin his new life, these kids, like thousands of others across the state, go back to theirs, behind locked doors. They're a real small piece of our culture, of the world we create, that, that just really almost go invisible. And the reason people should care is because they're our kids, you know? For more information on New Horizons, call the number on your screen. All of our kids need hope here. I mean, they need to see this as a place where they can be successful, so they really begin to choose other options. We sat down to talk with Kathy Moxon of the Humboldt Area Foundation, Jacqueline Debitz, Humboldt County's Economic Development Coordinator, and Humboldt State Professor Joe Leeper. Well, again, from a geographic standpoint, our greatest strength is our greatest weakness. We're not close to anything or anybody. If you go back and look historically at Humboldt County, especially during the 20s and 30s, the so-called depression, there was a lot of bootlegging up here, a lot of hidden underground economy, and people are used to doing things on their own. They're very independent. So I think it's tradition here. You have probably, depending on the street value, at least $250 million in marijuana. Where does that go? Jacqueline? From a business point of view, there's some, a lot of people who would say that's a positive impact. For the retail trail, they're going to get a lot more cash moving through the retail trade because cash is easy to spend in retail. Um, there's also quite a bit of startup capital coming from um, marijuana businesses. There's definitely downsides. I mean, we see children, multiple generations, aren't seeing the re need to work if they grew up in a in a multi-generation marijuana ho household, you're only working part-time and making a really good living. Um, that diminishes our ability to, to recover economically. It really does affect our workforce. When you have businesses who are really trying to toe the line to be part of the solution and have drug-free um, workplaces, and you do drug testing for incoming applicants, you can have an 80% failure rate. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Now, are those people considered not functional in our community? Many of them are probably considered totally functional in our community. Looking toward the future, what is the future for Humboldt County that respects the independence of its people and yet heads in the right direction and away from things that could be a detriment to your cultural development? One of the really exciting things about Humboldt County's economy is we have very high innovation here and high innovation indicators. 23% of our population has a bachelor's degree or higher. And when they looked across the United States, the highest regions averaged 19.5%. When an area has high innovation and high entrepreneurship, it also has higher productivity, higher job growth, and higher wage growth. So the potential for us for the future is really strong because of those indicators. We think a lot about um, cultural values and how do we create a community in which using drugs is not right. It's not acceptable. We've gone through an era where 
smoking marijuana was an okay thing to do. And we need to change that. It has to be not normal and ordinary and acceptable, but unusual and unacceptable. On the road next time with California Connected. Russia, Iran, Sacramento? Something fishy is happening in the state capital. Caviar is pretty much like a black gold. And getting the education on education. We feel our daughter is a budding genius and deserves a fabulous school. But where? Well, it's time for us to head on home. If you'd like California Connected to come and do our show from your area, or you just want to give us your thoughts, call us at 1-800-282-0964. You can write us at this address and, of course, email us, californiaconnected.org. I'm Lisa McCree, and I'll see you down the road. The RV was provided by Rex Hall Industries. Oh, hey, 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 you. Yeah, you at the end of the year, too. I just wanted to uh, say thank you for watching my channel. Uh, be sure to subscribe. i got about 200 other videos here for you to watch. So uh, poke around and find out what you like. Thanks.